Llama 2 was just released this morning, and it represents a massive leap forward in open source large language models and brings open source models that much closer to GPT-4 performance. Llama 2 is completely open source for both research and commercial purposes. Well, almost completely open source. I'll talk about that in a minute. I read over the entire 76 page white paper. I read all the news. And in today's video, I'm gonna share all of the most interesting things that I learned. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how you can start using Llama 2 today. Let's go. So as I mentioned, Llama 2 was just released this morning. And according to Meta AI, it is a suitable substitute for closed source models, AKA, ChatGPT and Meta AI continues to contribute to the open source community, which to be honest, really continues to surprise me. Look at this graph from the top tech companies in the world and their contributions to Hugging Face's open source community. And this is especially true when considering the resources necessary to produce a model like this. The smartest people in the world, a ton of compute power and expensive data sets, with some estimates putting the data sets alone at $25 million. The Llama 2 white paper is huge, and it spells out the entire recipe, including the model details, the training stages, the hardware, the data pipeline, and the annotation process. So let's get some more specs out of the way now. It comes in two flavors and three sizes. They have the base Llama 2 model and another Llama 2 chat model specializing in dialogue. Both come in 7 billion, 13 billion, and 70 billion parameter sizes. They also created what many consider to be the sweet spot for large language model sizes, which is 34 billion parameters, but they didn't release it. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Llama 2 was trained using a cluster of NVIDIA A100 GPUs, and NVIDIA continues to benefit from the AI wave going on right now. Meta trained Llama 2 on a 40% larger data set and doubled the context size from 2000 to 4000 tokens. Now, although 4000 still isn't that big, subsequent fine-tuned models will likely greatly increase the size of the context window, as it has done with the Llama 1 model. They also used a newer technique called grouped query attention to help improve inference scalability for the larger models. Last, something I find really interesting, they actually talk about carbon emissions as part of their white paper and announcement. During the training process, these models take an enormous amount of compute power and all that compute power is powered by electricity. And of course, there's going to be carbon emissions from production of that electricity. So noting the efficiency and detriment to the environment, I see as a good thing. Now, one thing that I was surprised by and found incredibly interesting is that Meta partnered with Microsoft on this. And of course, Microsoft made an enormous investment in OpenAI, which is a completely closed source large language model. So why did they do that? Why is Microsoft partnering on an open source model when it's clearly competitive with ChatGPT? Well, let's look at the announcement. They say, we offer developers choice in the types of models they build on, supporting open and frontier models and are thrilled to be Meta's preferred partner as they release their new version of Llama 2 to commercial customers for the first time. Now, I wanna point out a key word here, the word frontier. What they mean by that is the most cutting edge models, AKA GPT-4. So they're really making a clear distinction between open source models and the better model, GPT-4. And so this is really a fine balance between Microsoft investing and contributing to open source, which because of Satya Nadella, their CEO, has been a core element of their culture and protecting their multi-billion dollar investment in OpenAI and ChatGPT. Now let's talk about what I consider to be the most important aspect of Llama 2. Going back to Llama 1, it was an incredibly powerful model that was leaked from Meta and spawned a wave of fine-tuned versions and lit a spark in the open source LLM world. But one major drawback of Llama 1 was that it was not commercially viable. You can use it for research purposes, but you couldn't build products and companies on top of it. But now Llama 2 is commercially viable. But remember when I said Llama 2 was 
almost completely open source? Well, it turns out that there's one caveat to that. If you have greater than 700 million users on a product built on top of Llama 2, you need to get Meta's permission to use it. Now, of course, I can imagine that's one of those good problems to have as a company. If you grow a product to have 700 million users, you probably want to have that discussion or you're already investing in your own internal models. So why did Meta do that? They did that to protect their model against their biggest competitors. They don't want Google, Microsoft, Amazon, taking Llama 2 and building massive products on top of it. So although it is commercially viable for 99.9% .9 of cases, I wouldn't say it is completely open source and commercially viable. If I were building another company, I'd probably risk building on top of Llama 2 though and crossing the 700 million user bridge when I get to it. Now, one thing that seems to be really missing from the research paper and the announcement is its coding ability. And from what I've gathered, it doesn't seem to have very strong coding ability. In fact, I've seen it called out that GPT-4's coding ability far surpasses what is possible with even Llama 2. Now, let's talk about safety, which seems to be the primary focus of much of the work of Llama 2. In fact, almost half of the Llama 2 white paper is dedicated to talking about safety guardrails, red teaming, and evaluations. So now let's go back to that 34 billion parameter model. Why didn't they release it? They have the 7 billion parameter model, the 13 billion, and the 70 billion. But they had the 34 billion and they just didn't release it. It turns out that the 34 billion parameter model was significantly less safe than the other versions of their model, both larger and smaller. And so what they said is they are delaying the 34 billion parameter model due to the lack of time to sufficiently red team and get the safety to a better place. Let's take a look at this graph to understand how much safer Llama 2 is than other models. On the left side in these dark blue, these are Llama 2 models. On the right side, these are both open source and closed source models. And this is violation percentage. And the lower, the better. So basically how often did the large language model produce a result that violated its guidelines? And if we look closely on the left side, the 7, 13, and 70 billion parameter model all perform about the same in terms of violation percentage. But the 34 billion parameter model is double that of the other models. And that is why they're delaying the release of the 34 billion parameter model. But I'm personally very excited for that specific size because it's large enough to have great quality, but small enough to fit on a high-end consumer-grade GPU. Now, Llama 2 is censored, but if it's anything like Llama 1, there are going to be fine-tuned versions of it that effectively remove the censorship altogether. So talking about safety and helpfulness, there has traditionally been a trade-off between these two things. The more rewards that are given to safety during training, the less helpful a model becomes. However, one of the big advancements of this paper is that Meta seems to have solved that problem with a two reward model approach, one for helpfulness and one for safety. Now they haven't released these reward models, but I really hope they do. Okay, with all of that aside, Meta still does say that there is a significant performance gap between Llama 2 and the Frontier models. And the Frontier models are GPT-4 by OpenAI and Palm 2 by Google. Okay, so now the part that I know you wanna hear. How do I actually use this today? Well, you can download the models, the weights, and the code at Meta's Hugging Face repository. And there are already fully hosted versions of the 7B and 13B models, all of which I'll link to in the description below. I plan on doing extensive testing on not only the base models and all the different sizes of them, but all of the inevitable fine-tuned versions that come from the Llama 2 model. I'll be running all of the versions through my LLM rubric, and I'm gonna report the results to you. If you like this video, please consider giving me a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.